Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Wendy. Today we're going to be doing three Dollar Tree Plus DIYs for Christmas. And the first thing we'll start with are two of these large wood tags. They're not really wood, but they're really cute the way they are, but we're going to change them up a bit. Some random greenery that I had left, some Hobby Lobby ribbon, buffalo check, a ruler, we're gonna use our Silhouette Cameo 3, but you could do this totally by hand. And I'm using black matte vinyl. And if you don't have a, a cutting machine, you can use a black paint pen or even a Sharpie. So then we have our Waverly White chalk paint, a glue gun, paintbrush, scissors, and some wire cutters, and anything else that you might need. So to get started, I'm going to turn these tags over and get the stickers off. I was given uh, some advice to get them off easier. Just use your hot blow dryer on hot setting and it'll take it right up and it really did work. So now I'm gonna just use the Waverly White chalk paint to paint the entire tag. And I wanna go on an up and down motion so that it's all even and if it gets too thick, adds a little bit of water. So now I'm gonna print out my Merry and Bright, which is what we're gonna put on there. But a little clue, if you have your measurements already and you do one of the words, you can just duplicate it by hitting the two cubes up at the top there and then just edit the letters and it'll be the exact same size that you've already measured for so you don't have to adjust it again. So. I'm sure I didn't invent that, but just to get something the same size. So now I'm gonna cut my words out and I'm using this black matte vinyl and I just put it onto the cutting mat and load it into my Cameo Silhouette. And then once it's cut out, I'm going to take it off of the mat. Be sure to cover your mat because I had to get a new one because mine got so icky. But I didn't have enough of the uh, vinyl so for the word bright I had to kind of cut and paste it and and you can do that if you're using scrap pieces you don't have to put it all on one word especially or on one piece especially if it's a large uh, cutout like this and so I had to separate the T from bright and then put it back together so here I'm just weeding out or taking off the top layer and then weeding out inside the different letters. And this was really easy because it was very large and because the tags are large. So here's where I'm adding the T to bright and I just cut it down and set it next to the letters. You might also be able to see that I cut off the top of the letters accidentally because I placed the vinyl a little bit too low. So it's not gonna matter though because our greenery is gonna cover that top portion. So now I'm just pulling off the backing of the vinyl and using my Dollar Tree transfer tape, which is actually contact paper, clear contact paper. I'm just gonna use that to put the letters onto my tags. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball this and put it in the middle and I can actually move this around anytime you're placing the words on a painted wood area. It's a lot easier to move around. If you don't get it right the first time, it won't just automatically stick as soon as it touches. So that helps in case you wanna move it around or you don't get it straight the first time. So after I get that one down, I'm gonna do the same thing with the other tag. And I put the tags next to each other so I would know that they were the right height, you know, so that they're equal. And I just removed the transfer tape and they're ready to go. I like the way the original tags from Dollar Tree had that bottom piece as a trim. So I decided to just use some Buffalo check. It was about the same width and I just hot glued that on either end and use that for the bottom. Once I have that on, I know I'm gonna place them overlapping like this, but I want to first trim the edges. They're not thick, but there's enough there that it was just showing the cardboard or 
press board, whatever it is. So I just used a makeup sponge and trimmed them out to give it a kind of a rustic, almost an enamel wear look. And then I hot glued them together. And I had this Buffalo check bow already made from a previous project that I decided not to use it on. So instead of showing you guys a hundred times how to make a bow, which I'll do again later in this video, I'm just gonna use one that's already pre-made and it happened to be the perfect size. So I hot glued that onto the top of the tags, but I wanted to be able to still see that these were tags. So I left the corners kind of open so that they still had that tapered edge and you could tell that these were little tags. So now I'm gonna place my greenery on either side and I'm trying to figure out where I want it and how I want it placed before I do any of the gluing. And I took this lamb's ear after I put the other Christmas branches in and I'm gonna place that around also. And the, the lamb's ear, it's got that real soft look and it's also very farmhouse. And I just, I love the look of the lamb's ear, even though it's not specifically for Christmas, it still adds both Christmas and farmhouse. So I went ahead and added that as well. And I'm hot gluing everything once I've got my placement figured out and just cut down the stems of like the pine cones or any of the greenery that you're using. I wanted the pine cones to kind of look like they were coming out of the lamb's ear. So I cut the lamb's ear in about a third and then put a little piece on top and then a little piece on bottom. And so that it is nestling the pine cone in there. And so I'm just using my hot glue to place everything. And one thing that I figured out is that instead of taking off the lamb's ear, cutting it off and then turning the leaves over because I don't like the backs showing, I just, there's a little place where you can twist some of those little branches and it'll turn around for you. But they're kind of hard to see. So now I just dovetailed my end of my bow and tucked it in there and pulled it out so that it looks like it's flowing through there and just went through the same motions on the other side. I don't know if you noticed, but I'm using a new glue gun. My mom bought this for me because she was tired of seeing my ugly glue gun on all of my videos that I was so embarrassed about. But somebody had given me the tip that when I was asking how, if anybody knew how to clean a glue gun, their advice was you take the glue gun and you put it in the circular bin, otherwise called a trash can, and buy a new one. So that's what my mom did and it's so cute it's pink and i love it so thank you mom so now i'm gonna add the little jute tw twine to the top to make it look like a tag but also to hang it and so i just fed the twine through the little holes that are already up there tied a knot and here it is all done and hung up and I think it looks so cute and for two dollars plus your other supplies the ribbon and the greenery I think it turned out super super cute. Here I hung it and propped it with some other items from previous videos. So I'm going to link those videos in the description box below if you're interested. But all together, I just think it's such a cute vignette and it's merry and it's bright. For our second project, I'm gonna be using this dome that I already had. I can't remember where I got it, but I know that Walmart has the same kind, about the same size, and I'm gonna use some random greenery, just whatever you have left over. And then from Dollar Tree, this little wooden jar with the red truck and tree, it's so cute. 
and then an empty ribbon spool. I'm gonna use that as a lifter for the jar so that it's taller inside of the dome. And then also some ornaments from Dollar Tree. This is the 15 piece long tube and it has the glittery ones, the matte ones, and then the shiny ones. And you can see I've already gotten into this by cutting it in half instead of pulling them all out. Just some felt, this ends up really not even showing, but I just had some leftover fabric. Some Waverly white chalk paint and your basic scissors, wire cutters, some buffalo check ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby for $9.99, it, it, regular price is $9.99, but I got it for $5. And then a tinsel stem to wrap our bow. And then here's my beautiful glue gun. This is a Chandler Tools. Uh, it has its stand on it. I absolutely love this thing. And I really like the color too, so that's always important. But it's, yeah, Chandler Tool and it, we got it off of Amazon, well, mom did, and so I'm gonna be using this for the first time. And then I'm also going to be using some black acrylic paint, and the first thing I did was paint the bottom of the dome black. Now the ones at Walmart that are $12.99, they're already black, so the base, you won't have to do this if you pick one up from, um, Walmart. So I'm also going to paint the little empty ribbon spool and hot glue some of that felt. You could use the Dollar Tree car chamois or paper. It totally doesn't matter because like I said, it's not really going to show. I use this thinking that if it did show, it would look like snow under the jar. So to get the backing off, I just, just used a hot blow dryer on the hot setting and it comes off really well there's a little bit of stickies that you know kind of get left over so i just sanded that down and it's completely gone and a brand new surface so using that apple barrel black acrylic paint i just covered the back and i didn't take off the jute twine that's already wrapped around the jar lid i just went below it and above it and moved it out of the way and it was fine So while that was drying, I took these small ornaments and just took off the little ornament hangers and I am going to alternate the matte with the um, glittery ones because I didn't have enough matte, but I thought that was cute anyway. So I just placed them inside and hot glued them where the, or where the ornament hanger was going up, One, uh, one's going up and one's going down so that they snugged in there tightly and um, they fit perfectly so that that was what I wanted and I went all the way around and finished with the last one so this there's a little bit of a gap on each side of that but you can barely notice and so that'll kind of be towards the back so then I took the little jar the wooden jar and placed it on top of our base and then I'm going to come back in with some greenery and just wrap it around and twist it where it comes together. And originally I was going to put it to the, towards the back so that you wouldn't see where I twisted it together, but it made a little, kind of like a little hill or something where it, it kind of stuck up. So I, I put it in the front and I was going to use a little tree, but I figured most people won't have a bunch of little trees sitting around. So I used one of the sprigs from a, a pick and just cut off the top turned it upside down and I thought that looked like a cute little Christmas tree so I just glued that into place on the front side of the truck and so then I'm gonna snow it all up by using my white chalk paint and a paintbrush and just went all the way around I put it on the tree and on the greenery and in the back and I'm noticing that there's a nice black spot where it's kind of just going to waste and inside of a dome you can see both sides so I think I'm going to add something to that so now I'm gonna make my buffalo check bow for the top of the dome and I just did a kind of a smaller size bow but still with three loops on either side 
and then I just cut that off and then scrunch it together halfway and you get the halfway point by folding it in half and then pinch it together and then using a tinsel stem I'm gonna wrap it around and twist it in the back and then foof it up and make sure you put your tail towards the back so that it's not in the front and then just uh, hot glue that to the top of the dome after you do the dovetailing of the tails. So this was a little bit thicker or wider ribbon, so I split it in half and then dovetailed each side. So there's a total of four little tails. And then using a lighter, I singed the ends so that it would not fray. And this method really works. It was a viewer that told me to do this. And so especially since there's a long cut in the middle, that will have a tendency to fray even more. So that took care of that. So now I'm gonna place it on top of the bottom of the dome, but I see that that blank spot is just staring me down and I decided to measure it and cut something out from my silhouette. So using some white matte vinyl, I went ahead and typed up the words peace on earth and I used the font hello from defont.com and that's for the words peace and earth and then for the on I used Lucida Grande so anyway you'll I'll put that in the description box in case you want to do this and but I think it took care of the back side so that if you do place this on a table or on a tray that you can see both sides and it's just as cute on the front or on the back as it is on the front so you know the drill on this i just cut it out put the transfer tape on it and then applied it to my surface and then i noticed that the top of the jar on the front side you know it has the lid and it was kind of a galvanized metal look so i just took some gray paint and some white paint and some lighter gray paint and took a makeup sponge and just dabbed it all over because I want it to look like the front there or as close as I possibly can. So I just went around and dabbed it all on there and tried to get the look of galvanized metal, which is a perfect segue into the third project, but we'll get there in just a second. So then after I got done with the lid, I wanted to add some definition to the sides instead of it just being stark black. And so I just used the same makeup sponge and used that gray with a little bit of white in it and made it look like a jar by just going along the edges and letting the foam do the work for me. So then I noticed that there was a little blank spot in the front of the back so I just added another little piece of the garland and then got that all snowied up to match the rest of it and then I do have a little collection of trees so I went ahead and added it I think this was from an ornament but just added it to the side and then the last thing I'm gonna do is add the bow on top so I cut off the tinsel stem, the extra portion of the tinsel stem, and then just hot glued that entire bow to the top of the dome. So here it is all put together and I think it turned out really cute. At the end of the video after our third project, I'm going to show it in a little vignette. And I think Dollar Tree is really stepping up their farmhouse game. And this item, because it was so adorable, I really wanted to showcase the essence of farmhouse. And by putting it into a dome, really anything can look just more important and cuter, in my opinion, when you put it under a dome. So as long as you get a higher, you know, a lifter to make it the right scale and the right height, you can make anything look really high end. So for our final project, I'm going to be using this Pampered Chef Flan Pan. 
I got these from my mother-in-law a long time ago and I am not a chef at all so I'm just going to use them for a craft. I got these at Dollar Tree. I wasn't sure which one I was going to use but um, also some chalk paint, some white apple barrel acrylic paint and some grays. Some random greenery and Christmas garland, some lamb's ear from Walmart, and my new hot glue gun that's so pretty in pink, and some scissors, and wire cutters, and I think that's it. Oh, and some E6000, that's most important too. So the first thing I did was I decided I was gonna use the taller pail and I it already was missing one handle, but I went ahead and took off the other side. And then using my white Waverly chalk paint, I painted over the pail, but it doesn't have to be solid. So we're gonna make this get a uh, kind of a galvanized look. So it's just giving it a base to get rid of that copper color so you don't have to be perfect on this and since the pipe tin is already a uh, metal we're going to just start pouncing some of the white paint to knock down the shine so it doesn't look so new and then i'm just using a paintbrush and doing up and down strokes and just going all over the place then I came back in with the darker gray that I mixed together and ultimately I'm going to use some lighter gray as well. So you have white, a light gray, and a darker gray. And I just mixed those together using also the Elephant Waverly chalk paint. And I got all of my paints from Walmart and you can get them at any craft store, but I just happened to do my grocery shopping and my craft supply shopping at the same time at the same place so it's very convenient so i went back and i'm doing uh, on top of the white base i'm going to use my darker gray and then go all the way around and then i'll go back in with the lighter gray and i'm trying to keep my brush at a perpendicular angle to the pail so that it just goes straight up and down and let me tell you this made this project made my forearms a lot stronger because there was a lot this it was pretty time consuming but it was I think worth it in the end after I got all of the colors on there I lost the footage of putting black on top but you can see to the right you just want to take a little bit of black and put that sparsely over the entire piece so now i'm getting my greenery together and i found that again if you just twist the leaves you can make them show face up and i just added that to a piece of greenery and then finding my front i hot glued the entire piece to the bottom at an angle and then I'm gonna add a small bow to the bottom. So I only wanted one loop on each side for this little bow. And so I just did the same steps, but just did the one loop and then pulled it together in the middle, pinched it and then wrapped a tensile stem around it and then twisted it on the back. And then I'm gonna attach that to the bottom of that little sprig that we made.
And then to cover up the little tinsel stem that you can see in the middle of the bow, I took some of these Dollar Tree berries from a sprig and just took a little cluster and hot glued that to the middle of the bow. And here it is all done. And then for the top, I noticed there was a nice area where I could get some words in. And so I decided instead of using my Cameo Silhouette that I would just go ahead and hand write the eight words from Isaiah 9-6. And I had a Jewish viewer who told me that the lights of the menorah, the different candles, that they stand for each of these eight words. And so I thought this would be a good project to celebrate that as well, since they're celebrating Hanukkah. And here it is all done and I painted the leaves as well as the greenery but I think this turned out really cute. You obviously can't put food directly on top of this but you can if you have a pie or something just keep it in the actual pie tin and put it on top and with the E6000 that will keep it very stable and permanently held better than just hot glue. So, you know, I want this on my dinner table at Christmas or in a buffet or something, but I'm going to put this in a vignette like this to showcase both of these things. And you can use it not only for food, but just to display your Christmas items. For this little vignette, I got the burlap bundle of cotton uh, sprig from Dollar Tree. The little house I got from the Target Dollar Spot last season. And I think this whole vignette is very farmhouse, very cute. The books I got at Goodwill, I think they were a dollar a piece. But I mean, if you look at how much was actually spent on this, the Pampered Chef, I know that's probably not something that you'll find that easy, but you could use a Dollar Tree stove cover for this I've seen other youtubers do that so if you do go to a yard sale and you see some pampered chef or if you bought some pampered chef and didn't use it you can use it in this way and I still have the other one that I might use for another project but I do like flan so maybe we'll try that so I hope you guys like this video if you did I would love if you would give it a thumbs up comment you can find us on instagram and facebook i'm loving all of the comments and things and the feedback and hopefully if you're not already subscribed you'll consider con subscribing so i hope everybody has a blessed day and remember to always be the light bye